I guess the first question would be, well, this one I guess will be more for the filmmakers. Um, what is the, the first step in the process? Alexa, do you want to jump in here? And how, how does it get started? Does a director come to you and say, I have a script, I have no money, but I want Charlie Theron? What do you say? Well, I don't do a lot of those movies. <laughs> so I would tell them to call Cindy. But um, I think the, the thing that I would convey in a general way is that casting directors are facilitators. And we work simultaneously on a lot of different things at the same time. We're talking to filmmakers, uh, writers, people who are paying, whether it's a studio or uh, independent producers, and trying to serve that master, which is ultimately the material, through a, everything, going back to everything that we've done in the past and going through it and making our own lists, being bombarded with ideas from agents and trying to figure out what works and what's possible in a very squeezed time frame usually. Um, but to answer that question about when somebody comes to you, are you talking about an unfinanced film? Trying yes, because I would... See, I consider that producing, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I really don't think that is casting. I think that's a way of financing independent films. But Cindy's worked on a lot more m movies like that than I have, so you can sort of address that. I think that, you know, it, the films come to you in many, many ways. One of them is, uh, I have a script, I don't have any financing, will you attach and help me? And, and then hopefully there's a producer that you have a relationship with that's working with you as a filmmaker. And if you do, hopefully the producer is, is approaching me and trying to hire me to consult for a period of time to get a celebrity or a star that's going to hopefully help finance your film. Sometimes there is money already that exists <laughs> and the film is going to go and they uh, say, great, will you meet and you know the director will meet a couple of casting directors and then we'll pick the one that they feel has the same vision, hopefully, as them to tell their story. But I, I think that this idea that you, you know, are attaching names to projects that are partially or non-financed, it's a reality in terms of what we do, but it really isn't casting. Um, well, I mean, it, <laughs> it's gray, I think. Um, I think that it's what it's become, it is producing, but that the film industry hasn't caught up with the fact that that's what it is. It's still casting right. and that the producers oftentimes get the credit for something that you may have had a, 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 a <laughs> big, big hand in doing, but you certainly aren't getting gross points for uh, attaching Ellen Barkin or whoever it is. Which is, it's just an incredibly long, time-consuming process that is just as much work as anything else, so. I think now it's different. I think now it's changing and that is a recognized profession, that people actually know that there's something called a casting director. They may not know what it is, but they know about it and they hear about it. I think when I started, you just, it, you, you apprentice, you <coughs> intern and you do it. This is, that's what you do. And that's still the way that it is. You, you know, everybody interns in my office, then they become an assistant, then they become an associate, and hopefully they want to be a casting director, or there are lots of people who don't want to be a casting director and they want to stay an associate. But that hasn't changed. I mean, the, it is really, truly a profession in which apprenticing, in the true sense of it, is the only way you can learn to do it. That's right. I mean, I, I studied to be a director in college, a theater director. And though that skill set, ultimately served me very well because it's about reading material, it's about working with actors and so I think that um, I tend to trust more that someone's going to have a sense of how to be begin to be a casting director if they have some kind of background either as an actor or as a director, or, you know, something that is active in terms of dealing with acting. And for me, I was studying acting in school until I got uh, to the point at you know at the college level where it seemed like I needed to leave to go to LA or New York to pursue acting or not, and I decided I, I honestly didn't want to put myself through it. Maybe perhaps like you know I think actors you have to have that need and that passion and you know not want to do anything else. And I guess I found I, I wanted to be involved, but I didn't want to put myself out there as an actor. And so I, I went to the other side and I started working 
uh, immediately as an agent in uh, this area. And then after six years as an agent, started assisting for a casting director who did commercials. And uh, then within, I guess within six months or so, did extras casting on a film and then worked my, up to, my way up to principal casting. And so. I think what we're saying is that, you know, is by doing it, mm -hmm. wherever that is. You know, if it's working in her office, my office, Alexa's office, I think right now it's just by doing it and then ultimately seeing if you like it, you know, because you can have a preconceived idea of what it is and then you get in there and you realize, oh my God, all I'm doing is typing, you know, or oh my God, all I'm doing is, well, back in the day, filing pictures and resumes, you know, but to, to know that when you were filing pictures and resumes, you were actually educating yourself on all these actors that exist in the world and what they've done and it's coming across your desk and you're reading all of their credits and that's one way of, of building your pool, you know, of, of talent. I've worked with lots of different kinds of directors. I've worked with directors who talk at actors. Um, I've worked with directors who are scared of actors, but they know what they want, they just don't know how to communicate it. Um, and I've worked with directors who love actors and love the process and, and uh, want to just kind of play and do whatever they can to figure it out. And I, I think that what is what I have found to be most effective is somebody who's really paying attention and who's trying to f who understands that if the actor for the most part isn't getting an adjustment it's because they're not articulating it well and the directors I've loved working with are the ones who really noodle that and you know I mean obviously you see a lot of people for a role some people just right off the bat may not be right and you don't have to work with everybody but the people where there's a spark and there might be something and you want to see it a little bit differently I think that it's the directors who really take seriously understanding that an actor is a real profession and they understand actors language and you need to be able to convey it in that way and that that can be really thrilling for and everybody to also be able to jump in for those directors who aren't as comfortable directing and and help them find what they're looking for when they don't know how to articulate it. You know, I think we're kind of the support behind that. <laughs> I think that there's a, such a range, and I think ultimately the process that is the best for the casting director is when a director respects the, the actor, and when they, they actually know it's something that they're bringing to the table that we don't have that we can't possibly do or we would have been doing it you know and that what's on the page is a jumping off point right. to work to do work with this other person who will enhance it will bring more to it if you just want them to say the lines it's not going to go anywhere